This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create these vector coins using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll minimize this and get started. The first thing we'll do in Inkscape is set the view to custom, and then we'll zoom in at 100%. Then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button up top. And we're going to want last selected chosen from this drop down. And then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. So the first thing we'll do is create an ellipse. So let's come over to the circles and ellipses tool, click on that, and just click and drag on the canvas to create a little ellipse like that. Maybe about that width and height, somewhere in that general area. It doesn't have to be exact. And we're going to take the opacity of this and drop this about in half. And then we'll go to path and we'll choose linked offset and we're going to turn that red and then we're going to grab this little node up top here and just click and drag this upwards so it's about I'd say about that much thicker and then we'll finalize that by converting it to a path so we'll go to path object to path and then we were going to create another linked offset so we'll go to path linked offset and we'll turn this one green and I'll grab this little node up top and again we're gonna pull this one up a little bit but not as much as previously just a little bit like that and that should be good and we'll go to path object to path to finalize that and now let's go to edit and duplicate so we can create another copy of that and let's grab our select tool and I'm gonna turn this blue just so we can differentiate it from the other elements and I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag this down about that much and we're going to send that to the bottom by clicking this button up top that says lower selection to the bottom and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in over this left hand portion to do that I'm just going to press plus on the keyboard to zoom in and I'm going to press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse to move the page around like that so uh, what we'll do now is we'll grab the bezier pen you can grab the tool right here you could just press B on the keyboard and we're going to turn this, we're, we're going to click this little green squiggly line that says snap to pads. We're going to turn that on and that's going to snap the cursor onto the edge of any graphic. And we're going to need that here. So we're going to snap the cursor onto the very edge of the far left side of this blue ellipse. And then click. And then hold control and bring this line straight up until it snaps onto the left edge of the green ellipse. And then click. And still holding control, we're going to bring this all the way over to the right. And I'm actually going to just press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse over so I can see this. And it's going to snap onto the right side. And still holding control, we're going to bring this line straight down until it snaps onto the right edge of this blue ellipse. And then click. And then we can let go of control and bring this back to the starting point And click that first node to create that shape. And then we'll go, to our, um, we'll go back to our select tool. And then uh, let's turn off the snap to pads. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and grab this blue oval down there and go to path union. Okay, and what I'll do now is I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. And I'm going to click and drag over this entire thing and bring the opacity of it all the way up. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So let's click on this blue shape right here. We're going to start coloring this thing in now. We're going to start with this blue piece down here. And the base color I'm going to use here is this shade of yellow down here in the color picker. I think it's FFCC00. You can go ahead and click on that. And then we'll give that a linear gradient. Come up to the fill tab up here and we'll click on this box that says linear gradient. And then we're going to grab our gradient tool by pressing G on the keyboard. And I'm going to click on this stop down here on the right and bring the opacity of that all the way up. And I'm, actually, I'm just going to bring this node down to about here. And I'll take this node and bring that down as well. And once I get it down there, I'll hold control so it goes straight horizontally. If we don't hold control, it's going to be off a little bit. But if we hold control, it lets it either go straight up, straight left and right, or straight up and down. So I'm going to put this over here to the left edge. And again, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. I'm just going to press plus on the keyboard to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to double click this line right about here to add a new stop. Double click. And I'm going to add another one. And then another one, and maybe one more. And I'm going to take this stop, and I'm going to drag this over to the left-hand side. 
and I'm going to come up here to the HSL tab and under the H column I'm going to slide that to the left a little bit to give that a shade of orange. Then I'll take this stop right here and click and drag this over to where that orange stop is, maybe about that far away. And I'll go to the L column and slide that to the right a little bit just to make that a little lighter. And then I'll take this stop right here, I'll put this somewhere right about there. And then I'll take this stop, click on that, and I could think, uh, I think I'll leave that right where it is. And I'll bring the uh, H column to the left a little bit as well for that one. Make that a little orange as well. And then um, let's click on this green shape. With our gradient tool still selected, we're going to click on that green shape. And you'll know you have it selected when you see the green show up in the bars here. If you accidentally click the red, you're going to see the red. So make sure you grab the green one. And I'm going to give that a linear gradient as well. Actually, you know what? First, before we do that, I'm going to give that the same shade of yellow that I used for the base of this one. So I'm going to click this FFCC00. And then I'll give that a linear gradient. And then I'll click on this stop to the right over here, bring the opacity all the way up, bring the L column all the way to the right, and then I'll take this stop and put it down here at the bottom, and I'll take this stop and put it at the top, and once I get up here, I'm going to hold control on the keyboard so it goes straight up, like that. And then we'll go back to the select tool. Uh, I'm going to click on this red uh, ellipse right here. I'm going to give that the same base color as well. Um, I'm going to make that, I'm going to, I'm going to take the, a, uh, the H column and slide that to the left a little bit to make that orange. Maybe like that. And I'm going to give that a linear gradient as well. Press G on the keyboard to get back to the gradient tool. Click on that stop. Bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm going to double click this line right here to give that a new stop. And then I'm going to bring that stop into the middle. And I'm going to take the H column and slide that back over to the right a little bit just to give that a little bit of a lighter shade than the outer edges there. And then uh, let's click on this black oval in the center here and we'll make that our base color of yellow again. And I'm going to give that a linear gradient as well. Click on this stop right here. Bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm going to make I'm going to click this one over here on the left, and I'm going to make this one slightly lighter, maybe about that much. And we'll put this stop at the top up here. I'll grab this stop, put it at the bottom, and then once you get it down there, just hold control so it goes straight up and down. We want it going straight down. We don't want it going off to the side a little bit. We want it going straight down like that. And then we go back to the Select tool. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click this and go to Duplicate. And I'll turn that black just for now. Bring the opacity down a little bit and then I'll right click this and go to duplicate and turn that red and then I'll hold control and click and drag this up about that much and then I'll hold control and grab this little arrow down here and click and drag that down a little bit as well. Let me bring this back down a little bit maybe up a little bit like that. We want it sized and positioned about that much right there and then I'm going to hold shift in the keyboard and click on the black ellipse beneath it and go to path difference. And what I'll do now is I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up and I'm going to give it our base color again, which is that yellow. And once again, I'll come up here to the H column and slide this over to the right a little bit, but we want this to go be a little darker than the shade beneath it down here. So that's pretty good right there. I could leave, we could leave that just how it is. Then we go back to the select tool. Actually, we already are in the select tool. Let's click on this piece down here. Let's click and select that. And we'll right click that and go to duplicate. And turn that black. And take the opacity and bring that down about in half. And hold control and click and drag this down a little bit. Maybe about that much. And then we can send that to the bottom with this button that says lower selection to the bottom. And I'm going to bring the opacity down a little more. This is going to, make, this is going to be like a little uh, shadow that we're going to use. So um, yeah, that's pretty good. Now let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'm going to click and drag over this whole thing and group it together. And then I'll right click it and go to duplicate and hold control and click and drag this one up about that much. And then I'll right click, duplicate that, hold control, click and drag this up about that much. And let's click and drag over all three of them 
and click this button down here in the distribute panel that says make vertical gaps between objects equal just to make sure that they're spaced out evenly and then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything so let's take this middle coin right here and hold control and click and drag this off to the right so that it's sticking out a little bit and then we'll take this coin right here we'll right click that and go to duplicate and put this off to the side for now and let's click and drag over these three coins right here and ungroup them with this button up top ungroup selected objects so we have all those little individual objects available for us to use so what we're going to do now is you notice this, this shadow is sticking out beyond this coin beneath it we're going to need to uh, fix that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on uh, this outer oval right here and with that selected i'll go to edit uh, right click and duplicate and what I'll do is um, I'm going to grab the Bezier pen by pressing B on the keyboard and I'm going to draw a shape going around this part of the shadow too because we want to keep this part of the shadow as well. So let's start the, the, uh, the line that we're going to draw right here and then click and let's just click and draw a shape going around that little piece of the shadow and into the oval like that. And then we go back to the select tool we get a hold shift in the keyboard and click on the, uh, the oval we just duplicated and go to path union and then hold shift and click on that shadow down there and go to path intersection so now as you can see that shadow does not stick out beyond the coin it's just it's just being cast on the coin right there and speaking of which let's take this shadow down here and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that we don't need that one and uh, we're gonna do we're gonna have to do the same thing with this one down here so let's um, let's click on this outer ellipse right click that go to duplicate and then we'll go back to our Bezier pen by pressing B. And actually, you know what? No, let's go to the select tool and let's click on this shape right here. Right click that and go to duplicate and then hold shift and click on the other shape beneath it and go to path union to unify them together. So we have this one solid shape and then we could hold shift and click on that part of the shadow right there and go to path intersection. All right, so now it all makes sense. So let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And uh, I think we could click and drag over all three of these now and group them together. And then we could take up this coin right here. Let's ungroup that and click off of it to deselect. And let's take this little piece down here, this shadow, let's take that and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And we'll click and drag over this, group it back together and then I'm going to click it a second time to get the rotation handles and I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and grab the corner arrow down here and just bring this around two, three, maybe three steps like that and once you've done that let's hold shift and click on our little stack of coins here and align the bottom edges with that button in the, in the align panel go ahead and click on that and that's going to put them on the same vertical plane down there and then we can click off of it to deselect everything and then I'm going to take just this coin and hold control and click and drag this over here until, it's, until it looks like it's leaning up against the other stack of coins. And then what I'll do is I'll right click that coin and go to duplicate. And then I'll ungroup that duplicated copy and then unify them all together by going to path union. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to create a shadow going underneath this coin being cast on the stack of coins. That's why I'm doing this right here. So. Once we've duplicated that and unified it all together, let's turn that black and bring the opacity of that down. And let's click this a second time to get our rotation handles. And once we do that, there's going to be this little crosshair here in the center. This crosshair represents the axis on which the object will rotate. So if I rotate now, notice how it's rotating relative to where that, that little cross is. If I put this up here, it'll rotate around like that. So what I want to do is take this crosshair and put it on this upper right edge right here, maybe about right there, like that. And I'll take this bottom arrow and just rotate this around about that much. And then we could take this stack of coins right here, right click it, go to duplicate, and let's ungroup them and go to path union to unify them all together. And then I'll hold shift and click on our black shape and go to path intersection. And then we could lower that beneath that coin, bring the opacity down a little bit, 
And as you can see, we have a little uh, shadow now being cast on the stack of coins. So uh, let's press 1 to zoom back out. Actually, we are zoomed out. One final step that we could do is we can make it look like we have, uh, like the, the, this stack of coins is sitting on a surface, like sitting on a reflective surface, and there's a stack of coins being reflected beneath it, like you see I did here in uh, the thumbnail design. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Let's click this stack of coins. We'll right click that, go to duplicate, hold control and click and drag this down, and then just drop them to the bottom with that button, lower selection to the bottom. And I'm just going to hold control and move this up until it looks like it's sitting flush beneath um, the other stack of coins. And then I'll do the same thing with this one right here. Right click that, go to duplicate. Only I'm going to flip this vertically. You can click on this button that says flip selected object vertically. And then hold shift and click on the other coin beneath it. And we'll click on this button that says align top edges of objects to the bottom edge of the anchor. And it's going to put it right beneath there. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. So let's click on this coin right here and then hold shift and click on this stack of coins and group them together. And we're actually going to have to send that to the bottom again, lower selection to the bottom. And with them selected, let's go to the uh, create rectangles and squares tool. And I'm going to create a rectangle going over the shape of that duplicated coin graphic. So you, you notice the dotted outline there. I'm gonna create this rectangle going over that dotted line. We wanna lead a little bit of area bleeding through like that, that's pretty good. You just wanna make sure that the rectangle is covering all elements of that graphic. You don't want anything sticking out of the side. So uh, let's go back to the select tool. We'll bring the opacity all the way up. We'll give this a linear gradient and press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. I'm gonna to click on this stop right here on the right and I'm gonna bring the opacity up and take the L column and slide it all the way to the right to make that um, white. And I'll take this white copy and put it up towards the top. And I'll take this uh, black stop and put this at the bottom down here. I'm just gonna hold control and bring that down right here. And I'll go back to the select tool. Let me take the opacity of this and bring this down a little bit. What's gonna happen now is I'm gonna take this object and I'm gonna mask it over the second stack of coins right there. And what's gonna happen once I mask it over there is everything that's white is going to be uh, transparent. Actually, no, everything that's black is going to be transparent and everything that's white is going to show through. So, and everything in between is just gonna gradually fade out. And I think it'll make a lot more sense when you actually see it happen. So uh, let me just hold Shift and Alt and click on this rectangle right here in the middle so I can select that copy down there and go to Object, Mask, Set. And then uh, we could take the opacity of that and drop that down a little more. Maybe that's pretty good. You know what? Let's undo that. Let's go to uh, Object Mask Release. Let me click off of that to deselect. Let me take this rectangle right here and bring the opacity down a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'll go back. To, I'll press G to get back to the gradient tool. I don't like how um, so much of um, this graphic is showing through. So I want to take this black stop and hold Control and bring this all the way up to here like that. And then I'll go back to the select tool, bring the opacity all the way up, and then again hold shift and alt, click on that graphic, and go to object, mask, set, see how that looks. And I'd say that's good enough for now. We can take the opacity and bring that down. And let me uh, click and drag over the whole thing to select everything. Group it all together. Hold Control and Shift and click and drag this inwards to scale that down. And as you can see, we are finished. We now have our little vector stack of coins or tokens or whatever you want to call it. So that's how you could do that using Inkscape. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.